welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. and joining this week are Ed Gamble, Ria Lena and Rhys James, Maisie Adam, Hugh Dennis and Ed Byrne. We start with a round called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Ria, which category would you like? May I have home news, please? Home news, OK. The answer is pubs, chemists and car parks. What is the question? Ooh, is it where I got pregnant with my three kids? <laughs> <laughs> is this the uh, top three holiday destinations of 2020? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is it, uh, what is the smackhead equivalent of location, location, location? <laughs> <laughs> is it what are three places I've been told, sir, we prefer if you waited till you got home to apply the anusol? <laughs> <laughs> is it just, uh, name three places that have tighter security than the Washington Capitol? <laughs> <laughs> Is it, um, what, what are there very few of in Antarctica? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it perchance, where are my kids going to be doing work experience if I keep homeschooling them? <laughs> <laughs> what are the best places to find condoms if you're in a rush? <laughs> <laughs> Title of George Michael's biography. Oh! <gasps> How dare you! Is it too soon? Too too sorry. Too sorry. Too sorry. Too soon. Too soon. Is it where do you go on a Shane McGowan walking tour? <laughs> <laughs> Is it in the next reshuffle? What will Matt Hancock be the minister of? <laughs> So, and you have the uh, correct answer? What are the best places for a good old cry? No one's judging anyone anymore. You <laughs> cry where you want. Mate. I think the actual answer is what places are you going to be able to get the vaccine? That's absolutely right. right. Thank you very much, Hugh Dennis. Very good. <laughs> Yes, the question I was looking for was, what are some of the places that have been suggested as COVID vaccination sites? This is the news that as the UK ramps up its rate of COVID vaccinations at so-called vaccination super hubs, many businesses have also offered up their venues as vaccination sites. So how do you feel about being vaccinated at uh, Heaven Nightclub, maybe? Yes, personally, I'm going to Weatherspoons for my vaccinations because you can get a picture of vaccine for £7.99. <laughs> Also, in a, in a pub, the advantage of going in a pub is you get the second vaccination much, much quicker. You just, after ten minutes, you just go, same again, please. <laughs> <laughs> the problem with doing it in a British pub is there's going to be a situation where a nurse is going to drop a tray full of them <laughs> and everyone go, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Would it only be the COVID jab? Surely just while you're there. You just like, give us a COVID jab and maybe a meningitis chaser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> last night. I have no idea, but now I'm immune to polio. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do think that there's going to be some positives to places like Boots yeah. um, handing them out, though. Like, for one, um, Hugh will finally have his dream come true of having a life-saving jab delivered to him with the words... Cashier number one. <laughs> <laughs> Out of all the supermarkets, because the vaccines have got to be stored at quite low temperatures, Iceland must be feeling pretty smug right now. <laughs> <laughs> you can get a vaccine ring for five quid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have some suggestions for better places that they could administer yeah. this vaccine. OK, first up, Thought Park is currently empty. Yeah. Right? It's massive, so you can use it. It's outdoors. Yeah. And you can kickstart the economy, because after you get your jab, we could all buy a picture of ourselves getting the jab on a mouse map. <laughs> it's worth <laughs> So any of these places like um, that have water slides, for example, presumably if, you, if the doctor was nimble enough, you could just put people onto those and just get people as they exactly. go past. Yeah. Like, yeah, but just be, be careful he doesn't miss and pop you the ring that you're going to have in. Just people <laughs> zooming off. <laughs> oh, sure. Like, yeah. Yeah. Another idea for people to get to volunteer to administer the vaccine? Junkies. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> Someone who can find a vein uh, like that. Yeah. And a, a junkie. 
a junkie who's really, you know, jonesing. Like, you do these 20 people and then you can have your heroin? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know yeah, much about junkies. Have... They don't tend to share with others very well. <laughs> <laughs> no. They're probably just sitting here, here's what, ah, more for me. <laughs> Which special group of people will be helping deliver the COVID vaccination programme? Is it the military? It is the military. If you look, if you look really carefully uh, on the right-hand side of the photograph, there's an army <laughs> guy there, but he's really well camouflaged. Uh, and... Are they going to be wearing camouflage when they do it? Are you just going to see a floating knee <laughs> come towards your arm? Now that he's um, start, now that he's started like joining in on the briefings, um, the briefings are starting to look like an old episode of Blind Date. <laughs> like you've sort of got Jonathan Van Tam as the sort of intelligent, quiet one, and then you've got Boris as the goofy one with a job in the city. <laughs> then you've got a man in uniform at the end. When they get a person from the public to ask a question, I just want them to go, number three, if you were a fruit, what would you be and why? <laughs> <laughs> is that guy at the lectern actually a member of military personnel or is he a Trump supporter who invaded 10 Downing Street by mistake? <laughs> <laughs> it is fun that it's old people who are getting it first, though, because that means they're going to be the ones who are allowed out first. And that means it's going to be the first time ever that an economy has collapsed and then bounced back soup first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you get a vaccine in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the night? Would you do for, would absolutely? You do? Yeah. But yeah. they're saying that they won't do it. They're not going to introduce the holding of twenty-four hour vaccinations because apparently, quote, there hasn't been a clamor. A clamor for them. Yes. Do we have to start a clamor now? Is it? Are we now? Do we, is it a democracy by clamor? Is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, because this is news to people clamor? like me who thought that a clamor was someone who caught clams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They just want one. They want one clamour to speak up on Twitter. Go, I catch clams and I'd love a late night vaccine. <laughs> Could do some gnarly fishermen like in those kind of trousers that come up to here, going, oh, it's not a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> clamour says go. <laughs> I'd get, I'd get an easy jet flight at 3 a.m. to save 11 pounds 50. I have to have to get back. <laughs> okay, what's going on here? I don't know, but certainly someone's put up the mat signal. <laughs> <laughs> Is he running inside to tell everyone he just got a lift from Elton John? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he wasn't expecting cameras, and then he's just been like, oh, quick, I'm the health secretary, uh, look healthy, got to get them steps in! <laughs> Is he running late for another How to Cry Like a Human class? <laughs> is, is that empty folder all the scientific advice he's been following? <laughs> Seems quite likely to me he is simply going, need a poo, need a poo! <laughs> We all assume that he's running forward. Are we not sure? He, he might just be slowly backing away from the <laughs> Probably what's happened is a policeman has just shouted at him, What are you doing outside? <laughs> is, he, uh, is, is he running away from that massive Marge Simpson coming around the corner? <laughs> I'll tell you what, he, he hasn't seen a bush that big since Theresa's hot tub party. <laughs> <laughs> It is the it's the fastest the government has moved during the pandemic. Is he perhaps that's, uh... running from his responsibility? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Very droll, Edmund, very droll. I would say it. Never. Actually, he's, he's not running the country very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's not doing. I'll tell you what he's not doing. He, he hasn't got a leg to stand on. Oh, oh. oh. oh, this is just... Why do I now get more work on Radio 4? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I'm doing all of it. <laughs> Yes, this is absolutely Matt Hancock. What embarrassing mistake did Matt Hancock make this week? Oh, did he damage his brand by doing something right? <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he went to a surgery in Bloomsbury to celebrate the arrival of the AstraZeneca vaccine. Which sounds like a great plan. What was yeah. the only flaw on the plan? They didn't have any AstraZeneca <laughs> vaccine. <laughs> Did they say we were waiting for hundreds of tiny pricks and only one turned up? Uh... <laughs> 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 <laughs>
for running from his responsibility. <laughs> At the end of that round, the points go to Ed, Rhea and Reese. Yeah. Now we play a round called Mad Vax Beyond Thunderdome. <laughs> this game <laughs> involves Maisie and Rhea. So, if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launched a Wheel of News and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Our first topic, please. And the first topic is race. Who wants to come in that? Yeah, all right, all right, I'll do that. None of those shades are me. <laughs> As an Asian woman, I never look my age. That's because we don't age the way other races age. You know how they say black don't crack? Well, yellow don't mellow. <laughs> Essentially 12 into the day that we're 90. There is no in between. Uh, I've looked like this since World War II. <laughs> Think about it. You have never seen a middle aged Asian woman. We're either sweet little sex kittens <laughs> or wise old women. <laughs> a lovely little geisha girl <laughs> or something from the ring. <laughs> Here's a fun fact for you. Other races age and then die. Not Asians. We don't die, we just shrink. We're 12, we're 90, we're Yoda. <laughs> That's where my mom is now. Oh, little old Asian grandmother of mine. <laughs> As I've mentioned, I have three kids. The two boys came out looking like me, right? They had dark hair, they had dark eyes. I knew they were mine. <laughs> How else would I talk? Because my daughter, my daughter came out blonde. Blonde. I did not work nine months to make a kid everyone thinks I'm the nanny of. <laughs> OK, that leaves it with Maisie. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. The topic is the North. <laughs> that is me on my first day of school. Um, <laughs> uh, the last gig I did before lockdown, um, I was introduced on stage as cheeky northern working class comedian Maisie Adam, um, yeah, which I was quite shocked by because um, I'm not actually working class, but I think down here just people hear this accent and assume there's been a struggle. Uh, <laughs> honestly, you talk like this down in London and they're like, oh my God, a female Billy Elliot, I love it. <laughs> Are you all right using an inside toilet, yeah, yeah? I, I, I... <laughs> I'm from, I'm from Yorkshire. My parents, are, uh, my parents are both from Yorkshire, but my dad's a proper Yorkshire. He's a man of very few words. Um, in fact, he speaks, like, once every three days. Uh, and when he does, what he says is so basic, you wonder if it's actually quite profound. Uh, <laughs> well, I was trying to think of the last conversation I had with my dad before all this, uh, and it was... Um, <laughs> he just sort of shuffled into the living room, sighed, and said... I genuinely thought... It was so basic, I thought he was reciting a haiku. Like, he came into the living room, <laughs> sighed, and just went, dishwasher's broken. But I've checked the guarantee. It's got a year left. And then walked out again. <laughs> I was just sat there like, thank you for sharing, Phil. Did you write that? That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Even the way they met, my mum and dad, it sounds like it should be really romantic, but I know it can't have been because my dad was involved. Uh, they met walking their dogs, right? They met walking their dogs in the park. Sounds very beautiful, very Disney, very 101 Dalmatians. But I know for a fact it would have just been, like, my dad walking up to my mum, pointing at a dog, going, what's that? And her going, it's a cocker spaniel, why? And he'd be going, lovely, what are you doing on 1st of August? Shall we get married? That's it. <laughs> Well done to both of you. Point there for really now. Come on, sit down. Our 
Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what is happening. So, what is going on here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. You're out for a stag do, everybody's up for a party, and the groom wants to go to a museum. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is this the one kid who takes it too far on non-uniform day? <laughs> Is this the uh, annual meeting of guys who own lizards? <laughs> <laughs> it was a, um, a, a, a disappointing turnout for the first ever straight pride. <laughs> <laughs> Is this a sneak peek at the next season of Queer Eye? <laughs> <laughs> Is this a, uh, is a visual representation of the replies to any woman's tweet? <laughs> <laughs> yes! Yes! The bloke on the right-hand side is going, look, this is where the tour begins, but if you get lost, just look for the flag. <laughs> <laughs> it's, good the, the, um, it's, it's good that the guy in the middle's wearing gloves so he doesn't leave any fingerprints. He wouldn't want anyone knowing that he was there. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them might have been able to get away with it. We're not with the fact that wearing a mask is seen as a sign of <laughs> yeah. weakness amongst that lot. Yeah. Is, that, um, is that a bloke on the edge of the picture on, on the right? Is that the dad that's driving them there and back? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I just love the idea that they might all be just thinking to themselves, now they'll take us seriously. <laughs> <laughs> a real shame is that the guy in the middle is actually quite attractive. Why are the good ones always gay or f white supremacists? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, that old phrase. <laughs> yes. Well, he's not working, is he? He's a failed actor, isn't he? This is what happens when you stop supporting the arts. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Virgin of the Year Award. <laughs> <laughs> and I am just out of shock. <laughs> Do you want the correct answer? Yes, we have the correct answer. Please. This is Matt Hancock. <laughs> <laughs> and what is he doing? What is he doing? Oh! <laughs> You're right. This is a load of Trump supporters storming the Capitol building in Washington. Absolutely right. Did you watch it? Yeah. Did you watch this? <laughs> well, it's oh. a bit of an overreaction. Everybody's raging it because a, a bunch of white supremacists and conspiracy theorists occupied the Senate floor for, like, two hours, as if a bunch of white supremacists and conspiracy theorists haven't occupied the White House for the last four years. <laughs> and they were so surprised that they'd actually got in. They didn't know what to do at that point and just ended up sitting at a desk like they were in Madame Tussauds. <laughs> 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 Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> <laughs> Happy tap tap tap. Look at me, Look at me making laws. Yeah. <laughs> this quote says, um, says that he didn't mean to be in there. He's been quoted as saying, I didn't mean to be in there. Hell, I was looking for the bathroom. Someone shoved me, right? Like, that's. He's definitely meant. That's like me going, oh, I wasn't meant to be sat here tonight. I was just looking for a wee. And then the bloke from Outnumbered turned up and shoved me, and now I'm here. <laughs> But this is for any other country who wants to like get information from America or invade America or do something. All you needed, by the looks of it, to access that building was a hat. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, let's, yeah, but let's, let's be clear about this. Like this time, all you needed was a hat. But last, you know, when the Black Lives Matter were protesting in the summer, what did they have protecting the Capitol? They had the Washington Police. Mm. They had the National Guard. They had the Army of the North. They had the Avengers. They had five thousand <laughs> Imperial Stormtroopers. They had a bunch of dragons on call. So it really depends. Protesting. Yeah, there was talk that somebody had defecated in one of the offices, uh, which is obviously a terrible thing. Although, it does I know, I know, shocking sounds I, I from a vet. The Zoom crowd are unhappy about that, right? But also, that's not. By the way, I thought the cross is the scariest thing. It's not the scariest thing. The scariest thing is a dog that has been staring unblinkingly at me for the entire length of the show. <laughs> In the opposite corner to the cross, right? Oh, yeah. And it actually, I realize it's probably a picture of a dog. Uh, it's a dog. Has not changed.
changed position once over the goal. Oh my god! Oh, she had the dog turned into a cushion. Oh, she tried to use my ears. Right on, let's, let's clean this later. How are you all enjoying lockdown three? Oh. Oh. There was a DPD guy who came to my house in the first lockdown, and when I opened the door, he was like, I've, I think I've seen you on, on Mock the Week. And I was like, yeah, that's me. And now he comes so often, I'm the one excited to see him. <laughs> yeah. He could not care less. I'm like, here's me from Mock the Week. He's like, yeah, Rashid, Rashid! <laughs> <laughs> At some point, you know, somebody will deliver something and then it'll be the high point of the day. <laughs> and that's how it's... Ding dong, I got some laces delivered, like shoelaces <laughs> delivered <laughs> last week. And I was, I was checking their progress on one of the apps and going, oh, they'll be here soon. And then they, yourself the in the mirror before they ring the doorbell. <laughs> you can only you only get one chance at a first impression. Uh, it's like so you're I... waiting for your prom date to pick you up. Yeah. Like... <laughs> like the guy's going to write with a corsage. Uh, that'd be amazing if you... If you bought a corsage online and he had to deliver the corsage, you're like, from, from me? Like a, like a faded... I'm like a faded southern beauty. I just get young men to deliver me. Oh, you're too kind to deliver me these flowers. And me only a faded beauty in the, in the autumn of my years. That's my southern character. That's my southern bell character. Yeah. I don't do my southern bell character. You get to the point where all the deliveries come through to so the drivers and they're like, I'm not going there again. Yeah. <laughs> He wears, he wears a long white dress and he goes, ah, good, good day, Mr. Amazon. <laughs> I have many students. I had a delivery here this morning. <laughs> May I treat you to a refreshing glass of lemonade? <laughs> Lemonade is being delivered at. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, sir! Why, why don't we check the app together? <laughs> <laughs> Good day, sir. Good day to you. <laughs> See, I've been perfecting just having my uh, dressing gown just open strategically <laughs> as I open the door. <laughs> just to give those delivery men just a little bit of a thrill. <laughs> Treat yourself, darling. <laughs> I've, uh, I've had to spend, because of, like, comedy not really happening, I've had to spend uh, lockdown uh, working as a delivery driver. It's been harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> the guy... You love it. <laughs> At the end of that round, the point's going to end. You and Maisie! Oh. Now we've come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area... I'll read out this week's topics and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely lines from a fantasy film or TV show. Well, Master Frodo... <laughs> I've got a ring you can destroy. <laughs> Hufflepuff? No, thanks. You got any cocaine? <laughs> You shall not pass! Oh, you're Trump supporters. Oh, yeah, sure. No, the Senate chamber is just <laughs> over there. <laughs> Tell you what, girls, I've been enjoying Quidditch much more since Hermione taught me the vibrating broom spell. <laughs> he may only drink blood, but he eats everything. He is Vampire the Buffet Slayer. <laughs> so you must be the beast? Oh, you're the beauty? Oh, ah, <laughs> upward. Um... <laughs> uh, unfortunately, sir, your dragon has failed its emissions test. May I interest you in an electric eel? <laughs> The amulet has come to life. You know what this means? Our table at TGI's is ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry, but my granny says she's not getting in the TARDIS unless it's the white doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I am the greatest magician in all the Seven Kingdoms. Was this your card? <laughs> Ah. 
<laughs> yeah, it turns out those weren't his dark materials. We found his dark materials on a hard drive. He's now on a register. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Andy, it's just Mayor of Greater Manchester. <laughs> no, sire, the orcs will not kill any hobbits today. They are doing veganuary. <laughs> <laughs> the red pill represents your desire to know the truth. The blue pill will have you rock hard for hours. <laughs> <laughs> This may look like a normal bookcase, but if I take out this encyclopedia and turn to page 206, there's a diagram of a boobs. <laughs> <laughs> You're a wizard, Harry. No shit, Ginger Nuts. What give it away? The wand or the fucking school we go to? <laughs> In the Battle of Winterfell, the Night King turned to his White Walkers and said, I know you're hurt, but you need to go home. We need to have peace. You're very special. We love you. We'll go home. OK. The next topic is... Unlikely dating profiles. Lonely Southern Belle seeks <laughs> handsome delivery driver. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you may recognise me from Mock the Week. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm only on here because I've been banned from all the other apps, um, but what am I looking for? About 11,780 votes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at Chris Whitty 69 and I'm here to announce a cock down in tier four. <laughs> <laughs> Are you single? Over 50? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forty-six-year-old master of reverse psychology seeks no one. I'm fine on my own. <laughs> <laughs> Are you looking for companionship, unconditional love, and long walks? Great. I'm selling a dog. <laughs> I want to be your Ford Cortina, cos no one's been in me since the 1980s. <laughs> Lonely drummer seeks the one, the two, the one, two, three, four. <laughs> they say nothing worth having comes easily. Well, then how do you explain my dick? <laughs> Hi, I'm Deb. I'm an anti-vaxxer and I'm... <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> It's very simple. I'm looking for an Irishman who speaks like a southern bell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit of a pocket rocket. <laughs> Eleven men have died in me. <laughs> I'm recently divorced after 14 years of marriage and I'm looking to sort of mix it up a bit, try new things, maybe try a bit of cock. <laughs> <laughs> Sick of seeing your family? Date me, Meghan Markle. <laughs> oh. I've been married for 20 years, I just need a fuck! <laughs> That's the end of that round. The points go to Ed, Rhea and Reeves. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Ed Byrne, Hugh Dennis and Maisie Adams. Commiserations to Reese James, Rhea Lena, and Ed Gamble. Thanks for watching.
watching. I'm Dara Green. Good night. This is a story all about Will's outfits, Uncle Phil's temper and, of course, Carlton's dancing. Revisit the Fresh Prince now on iPlayer. Next here on 2, Dara O'Brien is playing host again, live at the Apollo.